All right, it's time. Hi, I'm Jesse, uh, and this is going to be my reading diary for Dead House Gate, book two of Malazam, Book of the Fallen. I think that's all I'm going to say for this intro because I want to get in and get reading. Check out, keep watching to see my thoughts, and subscribe if you want to make sure you see all of this series. That wasn't even worth putting the lights. So all I've read so far is the prologue. I just kind of wanted to get my initial thoughts and impressions down. Um, first, I was uncertain about continuing the series. I was very frustrated and only kind of mildly sort of almost liked book one. But a lot of people said that I should continue. I had a lot of that like typical like epic fantasy thing like you just gotta get me get through the first like six books and it gets fantastic. But um, I'm not doing that. I think most people said if it, I'm not hooked by the end of Dead House Gates then just that's probably the good time to call it quits. So I'm gonna take that advice and give Dead House Gates a shot. Um, with the prologue, I gotta be honest, I'm already kind of liking the characters I've been introduced to more than I liked most of the characters in... What is the name of the first book? Whatever, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I have little notes. I'm gonna take notes this time, so hopefully I don't get nearly as lost. The first one is that I like this snarky guy, which we later find out is Haboric. Uh, and then later I added an addendum that was, never mind, he's kind of creepy. Well, because he started sexualizing, you know, slaves, always a good thing. Um, and then the other question I have is the, so we have uh, Tabore and then her sis, oh no, that's the adjunct, and her sister Felicen, and they keep talking about their brother that disappeared, and I'm really curious about who that is. If it's one of the characters we met in the last book that is presumed dead, so maybe like Whiskey Jack, maybe? Or if it's somebody we're going to meet later, whether in this book or another book. Um, and I'm intrigued by that. Fly Priest guy, creepy, very creepy. Um, and that's really my initial thoughts. I know there's going to be a time jump. I just kind of looked ahead at the next chapter to see when it took place. There's like a year time jump, so I'm curious to see where it goes. But um, I just kind of have to keep it in my mind that this is not going to be directly connected to the first book in any way. From my understanding, it's going to be its own thing completely, and hopefully that'll help steer me through it, and we'll see how I end up liking this one. But uh, so far, I am intrigued. We'll say intrigued. All right, I have just finished chapter two. I'm so happy to report that I'm already enjoying this much more than I enjoyed Gardens of the Moon, like at any point. I, um, I understand what's happening more. I care about the I I know. Let me take this. I recognize and understand the characters more, and there are moments I'm laughing because it's actually genuinely funny at points. I am just enjoying this experience way much more. Whether that's because I'm reading it physically, I'm still listening to the audio. I'm doing immersion reading, which really makes me have to focus on the book because that's auditory and visually all I'm getting. Um. But I, I'm enjoying it a lot more. So for whatever reason that may be, uh, I, I am way more into this. Way more into this than I was Gardens of the Mood. That said, let's see. Let's see if there's any of these points on here that I care like to highlight. Let me flip through. <laughs> My first tab for chapter one was that I really like Mappo, but in a way I don't trust. He's fun and happy and well-intentioned. He's going to die, isn't he? And then we get Mappo at the end of this section, and I still really like him. I like the pairing of Mappo and Incarium. I think they're a really good pair together. Um, I'm just, I, I just think, I mean, they're also setting themselves up against the bridge burners, which is never a good sign. I just, I don't know what's going to happen with them, but I like them. And then we get introduced to Crocus and them and their party on the boat, which I was really surprised by. I was not expecting um, I wasn't expecting anybody from the last book to be in this book, so it was a surprise having them, but even more, it was a surprise how much I enjoyed seeing them. That it was, like, nice, it was like, oh, wow, something familiar in all of this, and this is when the book really started to get more enjoyable for me. Um, after this moment, it's like there was a little reset where it's like you 
can relax. You know something about this already. And I was able to kind of relax and just enjoy the story a lot more than I had been before when I was like trying to figure out all these puzzle pieces. Because it was like, here's a piece you recognize. Now you can figure it out from there. Um, that was really, really nice. Um, really not excited for more of Crocus being horny for Absala. Not excited for that. Though I do really like Absala. And I really like the dynamic there where they like, she did bad things, but it wasn't really her. And so can we trust her or not? And I really think that's an interesting dynamic, but also super excited for an assassination plot. Also excited for an apocalypse plot. There is a lot going on, but I'm following it. Uh, it's, it's actually really great. Um, any other of these that need to be talked about? Oh yeah, we got a kid that's actually an adult and I hate that. I hate that. I hate that so much. I hate creepy, wise beyond their years, actually adults in a child's body, children. I hate it so much. It's my least favorite fantasy trope in the entire world. I don't like Rel. Um, but I also don't think it's going to work out well for the Empire to just, like, dismiss him the way What's-His-Name did. I really like the interaction between Fiddler and Kimlock. I think that was really great. I feel like the name Kimlock is one I should recognize, but I don't. Actually, let me, let me check the Dramatis Persona. Kimlock, Tano Spirit Walker, and the other section. Has he been introduced before this? He seems familiar. But anyway, I like that interaction. I really like that these books have this whole, um, how do I say this, uh, element of repayment, um, both in a negative way, get vengeance, but also in the positive way. You've done something good for me. I owe you something good. I like that. Uh, I don't think Kalam having the book is a good idea. I think that's going to end in disaster, uh, which I guess... Given that it was an intentional plot by, um, what are their names? Mappo, like, kind of intentionally did it to follow him. I'm not entirely sure where that's going. Uh, then one of the points it did make, so I still get really lost during fight scenes. Anytime a fight scene happens, I just kind of glaze over and I'm like, uh, who's doing what? Because it ends up being a lot of names and weird things. I mean, like, this fight is, you know... The other eleven had clothes and a car. Even as Mappo flung the attacker's body aside and whirled, he saw four of the beasts flying motionless around the half blood she got. She got uh, fear gripped the trail suddenly as his gate. Like it's that use of like race name and name or race or a cultural tag, whatever it is, and then like using different. I get very lost during the fight scenes. And then my last time is Iskaral. That's the weird, crazy priest. Uh, is interesting. I like him, but I don't trust him. Which is like, I don't know if I shouldn't trust him because he's pretending to be crazier than he is. I shouldn't trust him because he is crazy, which means he might do something harmful. But I don't trust him, but I really like him. I love keeping a crazy character around. I love, I, I just, I love it. So I like him. Um, so yeah. I'm gonna read some more. I think this I think I'm gonna keep videos to just each book within it. It'll be a longer series of videos, but they'll each be shorter because this clip is already over six minutes long. So we'll see how this goes, but uh I am actually having a good time. I'm kind of a mess, but um I was gonna get a bath and read in the bath, and I figured I should update you before I read anymore. I've only read chapter three, it's been like a week. But here are my thoughts on chapter three, I guess. I only have one tab. I, I, I don't know. I've kind of fallen away from the uh, taking notes as I read because uh, I'm not good at annotating. But that one tab I have is literally me just getting angry at Crocus and Fiddler for talking about Absalar and trying to plan out what Absalar will do without talking to Absalar. She's literally in the next room over and they're like, but what if we do this? And what if you're trying to make her do this? And it's like, does anybody maybe want to ask her what she wants to do? Like, men, am I right? Am I right? Um, then the other thoughts, um, I love Felicen. Felicen has done nothing wrong and can do nothing wrong. Uh, and I refuse to think otherwise. She's fantastic. She's doing what she has to to survive. And she's trying to help people while doing what she has to survive. And everybody's like shaming her for it. Like, men. 
that has been general thoughts. I don't know if there was really anything more to say. Um, Mappo's interesting. I really like, uh, I still really, really like, uh, what is this? Not this girl, is that the name? It's a crazy guy, right? Anyway, I still really like him. I think he's fun. I think he's neat. Um, I'm less interested in what I think is probably one of the main parts of the story, which is the whole, not necessarily the Rising Rebellion that, like, Kalam and them are going to take advantage of. Not that specifically, but the, um, the military aspect with that, with the guy that just took over and that. That's the one storyline I'm just not super into. Um, but the rest of it I'm really enjoying. Um, and that's really it. Not a lot of thoughts yet on chapter three, but I will come back to you later with my trap thoughts on the next couple chapters. All right, standing for this, uh, the last clip of this video. I didn't realize I was so close to the end of book one. Book one. I hate, hate, hate. I, I don't like when authors use book instead of parts for the parts of their book because it's very confusing. But at the end of book one, um, but I just I thought I looked cute and I wanted to show it off a little. Anyway, so chapters four and five. Oh, that was tough. I took notes on my phone and I, re I record on my phone. Let's try that again. Notes on paper now. Um, okay, so first thoughts. Um, still love Felice and but that girl. Felice needs a hug. Or honestly, she needs therapy. Um, I think she needs therapy. Like, like she's going through a lot. I get it. Um, I feel for her. Um, she's doing what she's got to do to stay alive, but she's kind of reaching a breaking point with that, where I think she is confusing things. Um, where it's to the point where she, how do I even put this? She feels like the relationships she is forcing are necessary for her survival, so the two can't be separated for her. And it's it's troubling and I don't, I don't like where this is probably gonna, I, I don't, I don't know how this art can go in a way that's not going to be upsetting or heartbreaking. Um, I really like the way misinformation works. There's this, this scene where Kalam was in like that guardhouse during the sandstorm and um, the like people following him came in afterwards and assumed uh, the guards already in there were on his side because the way they were interacting with him, I thought that was really interesting. And I really like seeing, now that I'm understanding the misinformation, I'm really enjoying the way that's affecting the story rather than it just confusing me even more. That scene with Mappo exploring the crypt when they found like the gates? Anyway, there's a bunch of Bokorov following him and I would put money that one of that random assortment of wild Bokorov is the one that had been traveling with Crocus and them. I would almost put money on that prediction. Now, is that because it's a very easy to get prediction and it's obvious? Very likely. But I would almost put money on that. I love is Garal Pust. I love him. I think I've said that in every clip, but I love him. He's fantastic. Um, I love him. Uh, so I think one of the things that starts getting confusing to me is when there's like, they introduce an element from like history or not even necessarily like ancient history, like the history of the world, but lo the history of the characters. And they just kind of expect me as the reader to already know this. Now, it being in the second book now, it may be something I'm supposed to know and don't remember from the first book. And if that's the case, then that's on me. But what it comes across as is very much just getting thrown in like, here's some random stuff from the world that you don't know, but if you were a person in the world, you would know. And that's how I felt about this whole thing with Absala, Absalar actually being possessed by Dancer. And I'm like, should I know who Dancer is? I don't know the name Dancer. And then they started calling him Kelevend, and I'm like, is Kelevend Dancer? Are they the same people? And should I know who Kelevend is? And like the name Kelebed, Kelenbed sounds familiar to me. Like, I think I've heard that name before but I'm not sure. Um, and so it's just like, should I know the significance of this? And I think the significance is just, this was a guy that was a bridge burner. And so the fact that he didn't tell them when he was possessing Absalar is kind of a betrayal of trust on Fiddler feels like he was 
betrayed, but also, like, Crocus is the one that brings it up, and it's like, how would Crocus know a random bridge burner? I'm, I don't know. Uh, and then my last thoughts here was that at the end, we have the thing with, what is it, Shaik? Um, and they kill her, and, like, the second she got shot with the arrow, I was like, this was a setup, she's fake, this is something, like, like, it made such a big deal when Kalam saw her of how powerful she was, how powerful her guards were. So for her to just get shot so easily, I was like, she's a fake, right? Like, this was a trick. And then you read the, like, next two, three pages, and the people are like, but she got the ritual off, and I don't think she's really God. And it's like, oh, yeah, nobody dies in this series. Nobody actually dies. So I'm sure she'll be resurrected to cause problems for the Empire. Um... I really do enjoy, just to kind of give some final thoughts as I um, wind down this reading diary, I do really enjoy the nuance and complexity that is introduced in the, like, difference between hating the Empire and hating Lysine, where a lot of the characters, the, you know, bridge burners that we've met, um, you know, Kalam and Crocus, not Crocus, um, Kalam and Fiddler, are showing this nuance of, like, we are loyal to the Empire, and we feel that because of that loyalty to the Empire, we can't allow Lysine to continue to run the Empire. And I think that creates a lot of nuance that I'm not going to delve into politics. But, like, you can cre get the, like, connection where, like, I can support my country or feel pride for my country, but not feel pride for the ruler of that country. And I think that's a really interesting nuance to be getting. Um, final thoughts. I don't have my rating for this. I'll... It's only the first part of the book. I don't know why I'm trying to do final thoughts. Uh, so far, though, I, like, will say definitively I am enjoying this way more than I enjoyed Gardens of the Moon. But I also, if I'm remembering correctly, liked Gardens of the Moon at the beginning. So maybe it'll change when we go to part book two. Um, because knowing how these books work, uh, it'll change perspective and I won't care about the stories we're getting anymore. Do I want to peek ahead? Do I want to just peek ahead? Um, let me see. There's a name I recognize. Oh no! I just kind of looked and I saw Felice, and so maybe we're actually going to keep getting stories about people I care about. Um, make sure though you hit the subscribe button below so that you can see when I post that. My plan, and editing never really goes the way I plan, but my plan is to have these being released every other Sunday from when this one starts. We will see if that happens though. Please leave your comments below. I, I get a lot of interaction on the Malazan videos, which is a large part of the reason why I'm still doing them. Um, so leave your comments below, like the video, share it with your friends, share it across the internet. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye.